debt is something that has been around for a long time, but it's something that is not that don't make us uh, proud at all. Debt is something that families hide from one another. Debt is something that companies do not want to disclose. It is something that no one hopes to live with. But the idea is that you think you can get into debt and get out of debt very easily. You actually behave yourself in debt and you have to behave yourself out of debt. There are principles that you can use to get out of debt and remain out of debt. Debt makes savings very, 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 very hard. It's very hard to plan when you have debt. It's very hard to rejoice when you have debt. Have you ever planned? And the plan has gone very well until debt is brought in. So the loan installment has to go off, then the whole plan gets derailed. Have you ever thought of having a holiday until the loan comes in and then the whole plan is derailed? Have you ever thought of buying a car until you realize you don't have enough money to buy, to buy the car? And then you are tempted to actually get debt. Debt begets debt. The moment you get debt, it's a debt spiral. It's very hard, very, very hard to get out of debt. The good thing is that it's not impossible to get out of debt. You behave yourself out of debt. You behave yourself into debt. There is no shortcut into getting out of debt. You just have to be committed to getting out of debt and stay in the course. You have to build accountability around you that helps you get out of debt. Debt is something that we can conquer, but the one thing that you also can pass on to your children and you leave a good legacy is that you left a debt-free uh, organization and family. There is cross-generational debt which is very regrettable and the thing that you can actually get from your parents is a debt that you actually inherited. That should stop. Cross-generational debt should actually not be something that we talk about. It should be that you pass over assets, you pass over a good, a good legacy. They say that a good man lives and inherits for his children's children and so it is good to give and leave assets for your children and not debt. There is hope in getting out of debt. Hello, good morning! Studio audience, you can do better than that. Help me make some noise. Welcome, welcome, welcome. For those who are watching us online, I see you all there. Thank you so much for choosing to join us for yet another edition of Business Garage. It's going to be awesome. The intro video shows exactly what we should be expecting today so you know what to do. What do you do? Hey, what do we do? Share the link. Welcome, friends. As we share the link and let everybody know that we are live and we are ready to learn, I want to take a moment to send some greetings. Today is my day. Hmm? I want to send greetings to the studio audience, first of all, so they can be good to me. Yeah. I want to send greetings to Pastor Chris Kawesa, who celebrated his birthday this week. Yeah. Pastor Chris Kawesa is our leader here at Business Garage. And last but not least, I want to send greetings to the business chapter at Worship Harvest Nakawa. Hey. And also today, my brother-in-law is in audience, and I'm going to send him greetings. John Degea. I send you greetings. Today is the day for me to send greetings. So I'm sure by now you've shared the link. Have you shared the link? Put it on your status. Let everybody know that we are live for yet another edition of Business Garage. We've been going through a series of the five eyes. The first eye was... Insight, it all begins from the mind. We grow and increase and succeed from the inside out. And then we talked about income. Last week we handled increase at Worship Harvest Gaiaza. I hope you caught that edition of Business Garage. If you haven't, please do so. And today we're going to talk about impact, leaning specifically into debt and how it can hinder you from Achieving all the impact you want to achieve as a business. And on set today is a man who is no stranger to debt, who has an incredible story and so much for us to learn from that story. Please help me make welcome Mr. Grace Monira. He's going to do all that talking. I'm not even going to waste any of his time because there's so much. He has been through debt. He has survived debt. He has taught on debt. He has a curriculum on debt. I'm sure if you've gone through something, you have a book about it. He's about to write a book about debt. So get on to online, share the link, and let's learn together. Welcome, Grace. Thank you, Pastor Florence. Like I said, there's yeah. no queuing. There's no questions. We're basically going to learn from you. Most business people... There are those who are in business, those who are yet to get in business, those who are once in business, who 
basically think that they cannot grow, survive, expand a business without debt. That's what most people basically believe, that debt has to be involved, and whoever has succeeded, it has been debt. And so you're going to help us speak into that. First of all, is it true? Must we, for me to get into a business, must I first get a loan? And if I'm going to expand my business, must I get into a loan? If I'm going to pay the loan, must I get another loan to pay the loan? Hey. All of that. You, yeah, all of it. Yeah, top up, yeah? Even before, as you're paying and finishing, uh, there's someone comes from some institution and tells you, you know, there's another, this other opportunity. You qualify. In fact, they don't even come. They send you a text. Anybody receive that text? You now qualify for this amount. And so because you're eager, you have a vision, you have a dream, you, that's the only thing to do, to get more money so you can inject into the business. And it makes logic sense for most people. Get the money, you've already succeeded before, get into even deeper and get more debt so you can expand. Is that correct? Help us speak into that. Uh, thank you so much, Pastor Florence. Mm -hmm. um, you see, when I speak about debt, I speak about my own story. I'm not speaking about debt because I've researched or Googled or read a book. No, I am speaking from personal experience. Yeah. Um, I'm still in debt and I'm paying debt. All right. The challenge with debt is that there are only two options. One, you pay the debt. The other one okay. is you don't pay the debt. <laughs> now, when you don't pay the debt, yeah. the institution comes for you. Okay. okay? Put you in the cooler, uh, sell your things. That's the one option. The second option is you pay the debt. Mm. Either way, you're doomed. You know why I say you're doomed? If you pay the debt, then you qualify for new debt. And like I said, um, if you pay the debt, then these guys will tell you at about 70% or 80%, they tell mm. you, you now qualify. For this amount. For this amount. Mm. For some about five years, I ran the company with no debt. Wow. There was zero debt. Mm. Then I was told, oh, your turnover is quite good. Mm. Don't you have cash flow problems? And <laughs> <laughs> cash flow problems. Yeah. I said, um, yes, sometimes I do. And my first debt was an overdraft. Okay. Or 30 million. Mm -hmm. And I paid it. Um, and then I got another one of 70 million. Mm -hmm. And I Top paid up. it. Mm. And then I got 100 million. Okay. And I paid. Level after level. Yeah. Before I knew it, I was in 1.4 billion. In debt. Yes. So that monster can grow. And wow. will grow. Yeah. I think that's like exponential growth. Yeah. It's like the other guy who said. <laughs> <laughs> but in the wrong direction this time. <laughs> yeah. Mm. But um, you see, it's very easy for you to say so many things when you're not in debt. Yeah. Okay. okay. But once you're there, then you behave differently. There's a theory I wrote down. There are many theories I have. By the way, I want to write a book about debt. So that's correct. Because of my suffering. <laughs> I think that... <laughs> You need many to put down people, those stories. Many, for many people, people shouldn't suffer because mm. I have suffered. suffered. Mm. But there's what they call a behavioral theory of debt. Mm. And this is what it means, that debt really changes your behavior mm. and the psychology that you have. So a short story I'll tell you. One day I had, um, I wanted to complete the house in which we live. So I asked for a mortgage of 54 million. Okay. And, uh, no, I asked for a mortgage of 77 million. So the bank approved 54 million. Mm. I told the bank, you know what, take a hike. I'll not take this 54 million. I told you I want 77 million. So I gave them back their papers. I told them, I, if you don't give me the money that I asked for, then I won't be able to complete the house. What's wrong with you? Mm. So they went back, came back to me. And guess what, how much they'd given me? Mm. They gave me 80. Oh, wow. Over and above what you asked for. Yeah. Oh, wow. So when they gave me 80, mm. I got the Kathri and first chewed. Hey. hey. <laughs> <laughs> After all, that's not what you needed. You had what you needed I and need extra. I need to wash some knuckle off me. Katunkuma. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the thing. Mm. You will find that many of you are laughing at me, but you are like the, you are like me. <laughs> <laughs> no, they are laughing at themselves. Yeah, they have realized they are not the only uh -huh. ones. Yeah. Mm. So mm. when you ask for a loan mm. of let's say fifty million, 
you first get like five and put it aside for you. And then you invest, yeah, for you too. Now, Madame was asking for curtains, chairs, what? <laughs> You're like, you know what? Let me buy peace at home. <laughs> so, yeah, after all, you've got extra. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, you, you, you get that five and put it aside. In the curtains. Woe mm. unto you. Mm. Now, you're going to use less to pay for that. Mm. For the real reason why you bought. Exactly. Mm. But I think that we suffer for lack of knowledge. Yeah. Okay, one, a few things that I really want to define. One, um, interest. Interest is what you're going to pay over and above the, the, the money you've gotten. So you're borrowing 10 million, you're going to pay back 12 million. That means the interest is 2 million. That means there's a percentage. Okay. Mm. The principal is 10, the interest is. So you're going to pay more than, De short story definitely. again. Um, one time I bought, I, uh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> I, I warned you. Uh -huh. I got a large amount of money. Now that was in USD. But that time, I got it at 2,450. The exchange rate was 2,450. And by the time I was paying it back, uh, about seven years later, the exchange rate was 3,470. Wow. So even if I had kept it there, Definitely. and not Didn't. touched it, even mm. at zero interest, yeah. I was already doomed, cooked yeah. uh, from the, the word go. Mm. So where was I? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, no, they gave me seven, seven that one, I, I paid it back. But the point is, aha, uh -huh, I was defining some terms, interest, principle, there is something in, in, in finance which I would really want everyone to know. Yeah. Um, default. Default is when you, you fail to pay and maybe a month or two, you know, they foreclose or just, you know, sell off everything. But there is what they call a, an amortization table. Yeah. It's a big word. When someone uses a big word, they just want to confuse you until you don't know what you're doing. So, the amortization table shows how much uh, principal and interest the bank will be taking and yeah. how, how your, bank, your, your loan balance will be reducing. Now, this is the thing that actually makes many people hate the, the lenders. I calculated that if you got uh, 10 million shillings, actually 10 million, 5, 10 million, 10 .5 million shillings mm. at 24.3%, right. which is about uh, normal, mm. you'd be paying back a million shillings per month. Okay. okay. Uh, now you think that if you, per, per month for the duration of a year, so you'd think that if you're paying a million shillings per month for a duration of a year, so if you pay your first installment, your balance is 11 million. It's not. And after six months, you think you've paid halfway? No, you've not. And that is where the lack of education really kicks in and people become emotional and then say many things that I don't want to say on this, for, on this platform. Mm. <laughs> but if you are paying back one million shillings mm. per month for a duration of one year, actually after six months, you don't have a balance of six million. You actually have a balance of 6.4, 43087. And let me take you back. When you make your first installment of one million, mm. uh, your balance is not nine mi million, or not, uh, it's not nine million. Your it's balance more. is actually 9.722247. Yeah. Yeah. And that is the shocker that people really have. Mm. That they think after the first installment, it's gone down. It's gone. No. The way the system is designed, it first picks the majority of the interest. So most of what you're paying, or a mm. big portion of it, actually goes to clear the interest. And your, your loan only reduces with the principal amount. Yeah, yeah. So your instrument of one million has an interest, interest, interest component and a principal component. Mm. So only the principal component reduces the loan. Wow. So many people get shocked. When they say, you know what, after six months, me, I thought I was halfway. I done. Now I got a deal. I want to clear these guys, and these guys are asking for more money. Mm. No, you just are ignorant. And you're paying <laughs> fees for me. <laughs> School fees. <laughs> School fees for being ignorant. ignorant. But, you know, when I was thinking through, there are several things that before you actually get into a, a loan and a debt uh, problem, you see, many people get loans. Now, let me just bring it down. Okay. You get a loan to buy a special. You get a car. 
that will okay. move you from place A to B. place B. Mm. And you're saying, thinking, you know what? In five years, I'll have paid it off. Yeah. Your intentions are noble. Clear, you have a plan. Yeah, you've even prayed about it. Mm. And <laughs> God brought the son. Mm. And the son has begged you for the last month and you say, <laughs> I need a car. And your peers, your company, your type of people are all driving. Correct. Yeah. So when you get a loan and buy the car, the special, to pay back in five years, by the end of the five years, the car is old. Yeah, depreciation has Yes, in. now you think, I need another car. car. I need now a RAV4. Four. And then, so you move and you qualify. You qualify to yes. a top up. So, uh, you buy a RAV4. When you buy a RAV4, you pay for another five years. By the end of the five years, mm. the car is old. And then you qualify and then you, you <laughs> for a hurry up. <laughs> you need now a hurry up because mm. the family has also Grown. expanded. Mm. And then you get now a hurry up. Mm. Before you know it, you've been in marriage with the debt for 15, for 15 years. years. But your intention, honestly, was five years and I'm out. And, I'm done. and, and yes. I have a car. And now you can able to justify why you should be in debt. Mm. But the other thing is, it's hard. It's hard to plan when you have debt. Yeah. Everything seems okay until debt. It's very hard to save. Definitely, because you're thinking about clearing this debt. Exactly. Off. Even when the, the economy just jumps to economy. I don't know whether that is correct English. <laughs> 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 yeah. But... Even when, for instance, at church, a pastor makes uh, a logical appeal mm. that makes sense to you. You say, God, I'm believing. I'm <laughs> going to make a contribution. I'm going to stand with the pastor to solve this problem. But you remember you have that a you, monster. No, you, you, you have forgotten at that point. <laughs> now, when you go back home and write and write, and then you realize, oh, no, I just cannot. I cannot be I, part I, of this. It, it can't happen. Yeah. You see... When others are talking certain things, you just can't contribute. You can't. Yeah, because you fear to pledge. You know, <laughs> <laughs> because you know you will pledge and switch off your phone. <laughs> they will call you to remind you and they of want the pledge card you filled. No, you say, I'm not the one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it be, you see, you think you're a very moral person mm. until debt comes in. Right. Now, there are cases where uh, you have, you have um, arrears. Okay. And so things have just jumped to work out. And you'll compromise your morals when the creditor comes in and you can't pay that installment or you can't make good of the debt position. Yeah. It is important to note that you will be toying between what you know to do and what you know not to do. And you'll default to doing what that which you know. Yeah. Mm. I think the other thing that I would like to talk about is cross-generational debt. All right. Okay. Okay. The cross-generational debt is debt passed on from a parent to the child. Mm. And this is not new. It has been with us um, from Bible days. Yeah. Uh, in Second Kings chapter 4, verse 1. The lady uh, who was the widow. Yes, talks the to servant Elisha. is dead. Yeah. The debtors are coming. And you know, the interesting thing is, there is, there is, there is uh, I wish we could, aha. Uh -huh. It says that a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha. Debt makes you cry. Mm. If you haven't cried because of debt, your day is coming. <laughs> <laughs> no, now that we are learning, that uh -huh. day will not come. Okay. Yeah. But Listen to her story, mm. and her story goes like this. You know, she, she, she circles the issue. Yeah. And this is exactly what happens to debt. Your servant, my husband, is dead. Mm -hmm. As if Elisha didn't know. Yeah. And you know that your servant, servant. feared he the, Lord. the Lord. He was like, a believer. You know what? Mm. This guy eh, mm. paid fees for people. Yeah. Mm. He prayed, he fasted. Yeah, he served. He Lord. served. He yeah. was in the choir. Mm. You know, he was in. in <laughs> <laughs> he was a business <laughs> garage. Yes, yes, yes. And you know that your servant feared the Lord. Uh huh. And the creditor is coming. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Mm. Your servant, my husband, is dead. Mm. And you know, your servant feared the Lord. Mm. 
and a credit card uh -huh, to take my two sons as his slaves. Now, that brings a lot of shame. It does. Yeah. Totally. This lady knew where Elisha was, but she feared to approach him. She feared to send an SMS to him or a WhatsApp. Mm. I'm sure the, the prophets had a WhatsApp group. <laughs> <laughs> she feared, like, how do I mention that? Uh, the creditors are coming. Mm. And she had tried in her own strength to, to actually clear resolve. Yeah, mm. huh. To ask for a reschedule, mm. to ask for a reduction in interest. A waiver or something. A waiver or something. Like that. Has died. But now, debt doesn't know anointing. Not at all. The man was a prophet, but still debt came for the guy. <laughs> and he couldn't pray away debt. Mm. That's when I tell people that, you know what, you behave yourself into debt. Right. And you behave yourself out, out of, of debt. debt. You ain't going to pray about getting out of debt. God will forgive you, but you'll pay for the consequences of what? Of debt. the debt, yeah. Debt, getting out of debt is a process. First of all, getting in debt is a sweet, small sweet. Process. And it's very quick. <laughs> yes. I've been told that the person who comes to give you the debt is dressed a certain way. Uh -huh. Yeah, they look a certain way. You even get a cup of coffee when you're signing. We are coming that yeah. side. Mm, we are yeah. coming that side. That, you don't uh, come to uh, us. Just, no, remind me mm. to, to talk about that. Okay. When you get uh, a notice of default okay. from the bank, how your intestines are... Uh, <laughs> Lighten up and loosen. Yeah. Yeah. But let's talk that about that a bit later. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, people slay. People look good here until you bring out debt. Yeah. You see, in, in, in uh, debt in marriage, you know, is a problem. Already, number one problem in marriage is money. Yeah. Not uh, actually too much, but money. <laughs> and many times, the, whether less the, or the much, mm. <laughs> your money and my money, why did it become one? But that's a topic for another day. day. Mm. <laughs> but I am told that 56% um, of people are actually getting married in debt. Oh, wow. And yeah. many of them borrow to finance the marriage. Leave alone that. Mm. They already have the car skeleton of debt. Okay. They are coming along with. Oh, yes. Yeah. They are like, baby, <laughs> you know, I have <laughs> yes, this little thing. <laughs> there is this kaki that bring you along. Mm. Yeah. And it is debt. And the other one also says, you know what? <laughs> Even me. I have a grown, <laughs> a fully grown adult debt. <laughs> and what to you? <laughs> <laughs> Let's make a family. <laughs> Let's make a family. A family and then debt. we consolidate our debt. <laughs> It is, we are laughing, but it is not simple. <laughs> now, at least when the two of you come together, mm. let one of you, or at least both of you, have cleared debt. At least have a good story and say, you know what? I used to be in debt. Mm. That's a good story to tell. But when you're in debt and the other person is also in debt, then it makes things hard. Mm. So, yeah, 56% of people are, are getting married, and 50% of, uh, of couples are getting married and they're in debt. And one in three, uh, okay, first of all, let me first go back. Money is a cause for fights. Yeah. Yeah. Now, imagine debt. Now, you really have lack of money, and it's evident. <laughs> the fights are actually, okay. now that, 50, no, it, it moves from 56 to 86%. Yeah. Now, you may be here saying, you know what, me, I cannot do that. But one out of three couples make a purchase that they hide from the other spouse. Wow. I'll repeat that. One, <laughs> <laughs> if there are three couples here, one of you. <laughs> Don't look at your neighbor. Just look straight forward. Just look, yeah. Mm. One of you. Mm. <laughs> you see these three? <laughs> So when you count from here to there, yeah. the third one, one, one is it the middle them. one? <laughs> has, <laughs> has bought something yeah. and hidden it from the spouse. spouse. If you hide, you're likely to incur debt that you won't even declare yeah. to your spouse, which makes life even a lot harder. Yeah. 
I wanted to ask, but maybe let me ask without putting up hand. How many of you have debt that you haven't declared to your spouse? <laughs> they say don't put up your hands. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, they didn't come. Okay. They are not even online. Yeah. Let me but defend the online family. That little thing that you have bought and not declared it, you're prone to actually getting debt and not declaring it to your your spouse, spouse, yes. Which is uh, very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So, Director, yeah. W- w- I want us now to lean more into debt in business. Mm. For the business, we've talked about personal debt and the impact it has around the different people, your spouse, your marriage, your children who are going to end up carry receiving it in case you pass away. I want us to talk about debt in business. Many people borrow to put in their business to expand and usually it's it's justified that you know if i'm going to do this business or expand it i need to borrow more must we borrow to be able to grow our businesses and expand them is it even something to do or is there a way we can grow and expand our businesses without getting into debt and if i'm already in debt you mentioned something that you behave your way into debt you behave yourself out of debt if i'm already in debt i'm running my business the creditors are coming they're about to take lots of assets that I have put in the bank or wherever. Mm. How do I behave myself? How do I work myself out of it? Because I'm sure many people are looking for that solution mm. to get out of the situation or the position they put themselves into. For those who are watching us online, I've been told by Pastor Chris that we are going to do this again next Sunday. So even as you're watching, we are, I know that there's so many questions that are coming in already. Feel free to post more questions. We will handle some of them today. And then next Sunday, we'll be able to handle the other parts. The other thing I wanted to let you know is that we have an incredible offer. Tell your neighbor offer. Offer. For all those who are actively participating online, not with emojis or fire emojis <laughs> or kisses or hearts or claps or laughter, but engaging in the conversation there's a very special breakfast organized for the most active person. And this breakfast is with none other than Director Grace Munira. Yay! Yes. <laughs> so if you're online, show your conversation, your engagement by posting, share the link. There are many people who... I don't know. Pastor Chris is going to... They go to their phones. Okay. So the thing is, you have to get online and engage in this conversation, either by way of commenting, sharing your experience, or asking questions to be able to help and guide the conversation here. And the best, I don't know, the media team is going to find the best, not me. So after here, please don't look for me. After here, the media team will tell us who is the best in this conversation. But back to the conversation, Director Grace. Help us speak into the people who are wondering whether they should borrow tomorrow on Monday to expand. They've got a contract. Genuinely, they've got a contract that they cannot be able to execute without getting more equity. Mm. And then there are those who are already in the battle, struggling mm. to get themselves out of the debt they put themselves into. Would you speak th- into that? Good. Um, you know, because I'm in business, mm. and I also help businesses, mm. um, I counsel business people, the conversation goes well And the numbers seem to be uh, looking all good. Yes. Until you can't add up something. Something just doesn't add up. The sales are good. The expenses are normal. Then you say, okay, where is the money? Because I should see money on the bank account. account. Yeah. Say the money. They first send you the the, the paper. The paper. What the accountant has done. Then you look through. Then you're happy that the business is actually growing and making progress. Say, oh, no, we actually showed you profitability, but we hadn't included the loan we have. So in other words, everything is okay, but mm-hmm. we have not included this. So we are profitable. Yeah. So we are profitable without the loan. That is not really profit. If you're profitable without the loan, but you use the loan to make more, money, more, more sales, mm-hmm. then you cannot present uh, numbers without the component and the cost of the loan. Yeah. Two challenges, maybe, I can think of. One, the behavior theory of debt. Yeah. When you get that 100 million, how do you behave? And how much of it is deployed into the business? And for me, maybe on the chat, I would like to, people to confess their sins. <laughs> um, <laughs> 
how many of you have diverted a bit yeah. of the money? Mm, that you yeah, borrowed. because um, the, 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 you shall know the truth, and the, the truth, truth shall set you free. free. Mm. So confess call a bit. We are all <laughs> in, safe, in safe space. This is the thing. So when you get 100 million, how much of it are you going to deploy? That's when you remember your mother asked for something, you yeah. need to send her something. Then you remember you the school fees, mm. they have been calling you, threatening mm. to send back the children. Then you also remember you need an Apple Watch that you also need. <laughs> and then your screen of the watch, of the phone the cracked. Phone cracked. Then it would also need to, yeah. need to be repl replaced. Then your car has been leaking. Mm. Then the, the guy said, when you get money, come and re replace these tires. Mm -hmm. And all these things. So. The first problem is how much of it are you going to deploy in the business? I understand right now, in your heart of hearts, you're saying you'll deploy 100%. Mm. But you have the discipline to deploy 100%. Yeah. You don't. Secondly, even when you have the discipline, there's a lead time. There's a lag between your getting the debt yeah. and your first payment. So if you get 100 million today, you're going to order for some things maybe abroad. And they'll take um, a, few months, a month or, weeks. Mm. or four. There's a consignment I paid for in October. It reached Mombasa last week. Wow. Yeah. So how am I going to be paying the debt while I have not yet received the product? Mm. You can talk to the bank for the bank to be able to know to structure your payments. Yes. But still, there's a, a payment that you'll actually be able to make. So... What are you going to do in that moment when you don't yet have sales and yet you have deployed the money? Let's assume that you got the 100 million and deployed all of it mm. into a product. Then there is you supplying your customers. Yeah. When do they pay you? That also takes time. Exactly. Mm. And then you will give guys, they'll pay after 30 days, after 60 days, yeah. after 90 days. So how much are you going to realize to be able to pay uh, the bank? Yeah. Then there is stock that hasn't moved. So you wow. brought in 100 pieces, but realistically, the market changed. While you are away, um, mm. you know, someone brought in something that was cheaper. Different. All people's tests and preferences changed. Yeah. Now they are more healthy. Uh, they are drinking water <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> and yet you brought this type of juice. And yet you brought cheese. Mm. And people have, yeah, their tests and preferences have changed. Have changed. So your product hasn't performed as you wanted it to perform. Yes, as you had anticipated. So you have mm. stock that you haven't sold. What are you going to do about it? Yes. The best way to go around this whole thing would be first have a proof of concept that this thing actually works without debt. Okay. I am already profitable. Don't think that we are into maybe grocery shops. Then you say, I'm going to borrow 100 million or so to get it to grocery shop. Um, my brother-in-law has promised to give it to me. <laughs> Your marriage is about to have a, 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 a turbulent uh, course. Mm. You know, there is something about <clears throat> that. There is a scripture I don't like. Um, it's, it's in Proverbs. I forget which one. But I think it's 13... 13 somewhere, where it says that the borrower is left to the lender. To the lender. So but I think the team is going to help us find it. To Dev Ramsey, say uh, this that when you have dinner with your brother in law mm. on the table, everything seems to be okay. okay. Then by the end of the evening, you lend him some money. <laughs> and by the time you have supper, the relationship between you and your brother-in-law changed. completely changes. Mm. Now, that is how you actually become slave to the, uh, to lender. the lender. Even when I have wanted to not believe it, the truth is that the borrower yeah. is slave to the, to lender. the lender. Like it or not. I found it. Proverbs, found it. yes. Yeah. Proverbs 22.7. 22, Yes, the rich rules over the poor. Yeah. And the borrower is servant to the lender. Correct. Mm. Now, let me maybe give us a benefit of doubt. Mm. There's some guy who said that, I wrote it down here, that there are four things every person has more than they know. There are four things every person knows, has more than, more they, than know. they know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Number one, sins. Okay. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
two, debt. Many people don't know how much debt they have. Yes. Three, years. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes, I'm like, ah, am I 54? Am I, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but really? they have more than they know. Really? Yes. 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 Okay. And the fourth one is fours. Is? Fours. Fonts. For F O E. Fonts. Yes. Okay. Many people actually do not know how much debt they have. Two, many people even do not know when their debt will be fully paid off. There's no pl payment plan at all. No. Not even like, okay, when are you going to be debt free? No clue. How much do you pay per month? There they know, maybe one million. What is the balance? Huh. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? Mm. Let me get back to you on uh, <laughs> Wednesday. With an answer. Yeah. Mm. But you, the borrower, should know where you stand. Yeah. Yes. Me, I will be debt free 31st December 2024. Mm. And 2024, that day, I don't know where I'll sleep. <laughs> but it will be a big, huge relief of my. So Finally, the journey will have ended. come to yeah. mm. That marriage with the debt will If you don't have... get a top up between now and no, then. No, no, okay. no, 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 okay. no, no, no. I <laughs> fire. I bind. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, I think we'll handle how to get out of debt. Yes, uh, that's what week. we're going to handle next Sunday. Yeah. Mm. You see, someone else said that debt is slavery for the free. Debt looks good. Until you are in debt. In fact, someone has said here online that debt is a beautiful girl. She comes dressed so nicely. How do I avoid her looking at her? Just close your eyes. Okay. <laughs> close your <laughs> eyes. I would say. I would say. Yeah. That the temptation mm. to get into debt. I mean, I'll tell you a story. Mm. So one day. One day. I got into uh, a small debt. It was uh, 40 million. So... Um, <laughs> And I paid it off. Okay. So when I paid it off, uh, when I was making the second last installment, the relationship manager told me, you know what, now you qualify. For a top-up. So, yeah. Mm. Well, are you considering you in the debt? Can we? I said, no. I said, are you sure? I said, yes. So I paid off the debt. And a month later, I was happy. Then I told the bank, you know what, I need my collateral. Now that I need, uh, paid, I've paid. I need, I need my collateral. Then the bank said, Grace. The bank is the safest place to, to, put keep, your, your collateral. to keep your collateral. Mm. We know you have no debt, but it is the safest place for you to keep your collateral. Okay. Now you want to take your collateral and keep it in your drawer, in your suitcase, and then the cockroaches and rats eat it, mm -hmm. and then you lose. I said, it makes sense. I said, okay, safest place is the bank. Yes, is the bank. Mm. I left it with the bank. Alas. Master. Six months down the road. <laughs> you had got a top up. I said... Can we still talk about the other thing that you talked about? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 would you consider uh, yeah, uh, renewing this conversation? T two days later, the man was at my door, mm, we signed paperwork, yeah, and we were and the money, back mm. in the relationship. <laughs> You're back in a relationship with your ex. <laughs> yes, which I thought we were done. We were done. Like, you thought you had divorced, go, signed, gone. Go hang. Yeah, go yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, never come back. Mm. Yeah, and I've been good. I paid you. But I tell you, um, six months down the road, I, I was back. So wow. the, 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 we will talk about getting out. But the thing is, debt is so subtle. Yeah, you it's don't so see subtle. It, um, it creeps up on you. Yeah, it creeps up on you. Mm. A little sleep, a little, a little slumber. slumber. And you're in. Uh huh, and you're mm. in. <laughs> But there's, 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 there's someone I was listening to yesterday mm. who said uh, debt is due. Okay, when you're thinking about debt, ask yourself this question. Yeah. Which pain are you not willing to feel? Which pain are you not willing to feel? Yeah. There is a pain that we don't want to feel. And we plug that pain with debt. Mm. 
So you don't want to feel the pain of walking and working hard to grow the money slowly and accumulate it. You have convinced yourself that the logical way, the, the way out of patience, is to actually get debt. Yeah. And yet, there is a pain which is necessary, mm, which is a growth pain that you mm. have to go through. Mm. It is necessary. Mm. You see, there is another problem with debt that I've just remembered. So, you can be given an amount of money that you cannot deploy. So, Pastor Florence, you, you have, you have uh, if you add up all your problems, mm -hmm. they are probably... <laughs> <laughs> Nothing personal. <laughs> okay, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. But let us say that they are $100,000. Okay. Okay. So the issue is, if I gave you 300000 mm. what would you do with it? All of a sudden, don't receive it yet. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there's a time I received a million dollars. Wow. Okay. Is that a gift or debt? No, not a gift. Okay. <laughs> debt. Debt. Yeah. But I could only deploy off the bat about 650000 wow. So the issue is, what are you going to do with the rest? And sometimes, when you really think, th you see, when we talk about debt, there's that two million, five million, and whatever. But there is debt that's going to take you years to pay, mm. and your plan for deploying it is over phase uh, in phases. So you have phase one, phase two, phase three. Yeah. So if you give it a million dollars, then what are you going to do with the money that is not yet deployed? And how are you going to be a wise uh, steward of that money? Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be a problem as well. Because you will be paying interest of it that is not yet deployed. Yeah. But yet you, yes. have, it, yet you, but have, you it. have it, yes. Mm. Yeah. So debt is not as simple as we actually uh, think mm. it is. Mm. But guess what? Like I said before that you behave yourself into, into debt, debt you behave and you behave yourself, yourself yes. But I like a quotation that I got from um, Warren Buffett. Mm. Some people call him Warren Buffet. <laughs> <laughs> I think when they are, when they are hungry. Yeah, he becomes Buffet. <laughs> yeah. But he says, the chains of habit yeah. are too light to be felt until they are too heavy to be broken. Yeah. Small, small. Yeah. Yeah. A little, a little sleep here. A little slump. Uh, until a little you realize that these things are too heavy and you justify the debt. Yeah. You're going to open a new branch in a new location. Mm. That's a whole new business. Then why take on debt? Must you take on debt? Mm. If, you can, if, if you can do without debt, please then avoid the avoid debt. Avoid altogether. Me, I'm speaking from my own personal experience. experience. But, you know, there is something that I want to kind of end with. Henry Ford said that uh, if you think you can, whether you think you can or you can't, either way you're right. Mm. I used to think that it's not possible to operate a business without debt. Yeah. But I found businesses that actually operate without, without debt. debt. So again, whether you think you can or you can't, or you can't either, way. either way you're right. You're right. So, true story. Not mine, but someone else's story. Okay. Um, Roger Bannister, mm. he ran the four-minute mile and broke the record in 1954. But before 1954, the last record hadn't been broken for nine years. And so he broke it in three minutes, 59 seconds, and four microseconds. He broke that. But for nine years, no one had broken that record. Mm. And six years down the road, 22 people actually broke that record. Why? Because they believed, because they saw. They saw it. Yes. Mm. And by 2021, 1,663 people had actually broken the four-minute mile. The issue is whether you think you can or, or you, you can't. can't. You're right. Mm. Yeah. All right. Help me appreciate Director Grace to the audience and everyone who is watching online. What a hectic teaching. I feel like today he's given us an overview, first of all, to appreciate that debt exists and has its pros 
and cons. And there's so many questions online which I suggest that we gather so that they inform our conversation next week. And one of the things we're going to tackle next week is that how to get out of debt. Because like you said, almost everyone is in some form of debt one way or another. It could be debt in business, could be personal debt, it could be airtime debt, it could be data debt, it could be wewole, that whole thing that keeps popping up on your phone. And how to get yourself, how to behave ourselves out of that debt. Is that, is that is what we're going to handle next week? I've been told that the winner of today's business garage engagement is, drum rolls everybody, Dr. Emily Bagarukayo qualifies for a breakfast with Director Grace Munira. I hope you're ready for that conversation and you have all these questions because this is such a great opportunity to be able to interact with Director Grace because it's so filled with knowledge and just not just knowledge but experience of what he has done over the years in business. So next week, be sure to tune in if you know someone who is going through a difficult time battling with debt, personal debt, business debt, whatever kind of debt, share this link with them to know First of all, that there are people who have been in debt and they've made it out of it. And the next week, we're going to be able to handle how do I behave myself out of that debt. And the questions that you've shared here, they're not in vain. The media team is gathering them together so that next week in our next conversation, whatever Director Grace shares will be a response to all your questions. Right, Director? Yes. So your questions have been well received. Thank you so much for joining us today for our edition for business garage this place is the place to be because we share real life stories of people who have gone through things done them excelled at them got out of them and all of that here at business garage so thank you so much for joining us but you know we never like to close our broadcast without giving you an opportunity to receive jesus as your personal lord and savior i know there are so many people watching from the locations all across Worship Harvest. And I know there are people who are watching us online. You received the link from somebody and you've never made a decision to receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. First of all, there's a debt called sin. And the debt called sin can never be paid back. There's no installments for paying back the debt called sin. And so there's only one person who paid that debt ahead of time before you were formed in your mother's womb. The devil knew that when you come out like this, he would recruit you. But there's a person who paid for all your sins way before you were formed in your mother's womb. He knew you, and so he paid before that. And that person is called Jesus. And so today I want you to receive him as your personal Lord and Savior so he can free you from that debt. He can free you from that pain. He can free you from that condemnation. Yes, I know part of what sin does is bring us into a place of condemnation where we are constantly judging ourselves, regretting, why we made the decisions or behaved ourselves into spaces we did. And Jesus is here to pay that price for you. He's here to set you free from that condemnation, that judgment that you're hearing in the ears that is being said to you all around. And it's very simple. You simply believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that he's Lord. So say this prayer after me. Say, Dear Jesus, I come to you today to receive you as my personal Lord and Savior, I recognize that I'm a sinner. I'm in debt, too deep to get myself out. Help me, draw me out. I receive your grace, I receive your mercy, and today I declare that I am born again. Take my life and do something significant with it. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you've just said that prayer, debt number one has been cleared. And that's the debt of sin. There's therefore now no condemnation for you who is in Christ Jesus. So there's a number running on our screen right now. Go ahead and send a text to that number. Let the pastor know that you've just made a decision here at Business Garage to receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. He's going to help you. That pastor is going to help you make a sense, sense of the decision you've just made. If you're listening in, the number is 775 642 
649 Go ahead and send a text to that number and let the pastor know that I have just given my life to Christ and they'll help you walk the journey that's ahead of you. And if you need prayer, you just need prayer. You're struggling. You're so stressed out with debt. Even as we wait for next week to learn how to get out of debt, send a text to that number for someone to pray with you through that situation that you're going through. We love you, we care for you, and we want you to excel in the business that God has given you. See you next Sunday, same day, same time, same channel, as we delve deeper into debt and how to get ourselves of it. Bye-bye.